Welcome to another IB Environmental Systems and Societies video. Today's video covers the standard level content for topic 5.1, soils. Soil might seem just like the dirt beneath your feet, but it's actually one of Earth's most complex and vital ecosystems. We're going to examine how soil functions as a dynamic system that supports all terrestrial life. So let's get into it. Soil is a dynamic system within the larger ecosystem that has its own inputs, outputs, storages, and flows. This means soil isn't static. It's constantly changing through the movement of materials and energy in a dynamic equilibrium. Just like any other system we've studied in ESS, we can analyze soils by identifying what goes in, the inputs, what stays stored, and what comes out, the outputs. Let's break down the soil system components. Inputs include organic matter from dead plant and animal material, plus minerals from weathered rock. These materials get stored in the soil as organic matter, minerals, water, and air. Flows transfer materials between different soil layers, while outputs include nutrients that plants absorb and minerals that are lost through erosion and leaching. Energy continuously flows through the system as decomposition occurs, and that maintains the system's balance through ongoing exchanges. Soil is made up of inorganic and organic components, water and air. This fundamental composition determines how soil functions as a system and how it supports life. The inorganic components in soils, the sand, the silt, and the clay, come from the parent rock material through a processing cut. The inorganic components in soils, sand, silt, and clay, come from the parent rock material through weathering. The proportion of these particles determines the soil's texture, which we can identify using a soil texture triangle. Water and air fill the spaces between particles, and the ratio changes based on weather conditions, seasons, and the soil's texture. Remember how this connects to primary succession, where weathering of parent rock begins the soil formation process. Soils develop a stable, layered structure known as a profile that's made up of several horizons, and those are produced by interactions within the system over long periods of time. This layered structure forms through several key processes. Weathering breaks down parent rock material into smaller particles. Organic matter accumulates at the surface in what we call the O horizon. Then water moves material downward through the layers, while decomposition creates humus in the upper layers. Leaching transports dissolved minerals to lower horizons, and clay particles tend to accumulate in the B horizon. Biological activity constantly mixes materials between these layers. This entire process takes hundreds or even thousands of years, and that's why this matters for productivity. It creates the distinct zones where different processes occur. Soil system inputs include those from dead organic matter and inorganic minerals. Understanding these inputs helps us to see how soil systems maintain themselves and how they respond to change. The organic inputs into soils come from leaf litter, dead animal biomass and waste, and root material from plants. Inorganic inputs include weathered parent rock minerals, atmospheric deposition of dust, and water containing dissolved minerals from precipitation. This diagram shows how materials cycle through natural soil systems, with each component playing a specific role in maintaining soil health. In managed agricultural systems, humans add many inputs like compost, fertilizer, agrochemicals, and irrigation water. These anthropogenic inputs can dramatically alter natural soil processes, and it sometimes leads to problems like salinization if they're not properly managed. Soil system outputs include losses of dead organic matter due to decomposition, losses of mineral components, and losses of energy due to heat loss. These outputs are just as important as inputs for understanding the balance within soil systems. Organic matter is lost through erosion, which removes the nutrient-rich topsoil layer, and through wind and water carrying away organic material. Mineral outputs occur through leaching, which dissolves soluble nutrients and moves them downward. They're also lost through plant uptake of minerals and nutrients. Phosphorus often binds to eroded soil particles, while nitrogen moves through water. Repeated cultivation significantly increases the erosion rate, and that makes soil management really important for sustainability. Transfers in soil occurs between and across horizons, into and out of soils. These movements are really important for distributing nutrients and maintaining soil structure. Earthworms transport material vertically through their burrows, while root growth moves nutrients between layers. 
Burrowing animals mix soil horizons, and decomposers release nutrients at different depths. Fungal networks transfer nutrients laterally, and organic matter gets incorporated into mineral soil. These biological processes all help distribute nutrients more uniformly throughout the soil horizons. Transformations within soils can change the components or the whole soil system itself. These chemical and biological changes are what make soil a really dynamic system. Decomposition continuously breaks down organic matter, and that releases nutrients for plant uptake, and it creates humus that improves soil structure. This process is faster in warm, moist conditions, but it slows down significantly in waterlogged or cold environments. This kind of transformation is really important for recycling nutrients in ecosystems. Weathering creates smaller particles through the physical breakdown, and it releases mineral nutrients through chemical reactions. Acids from roots accelerate this process, and that creates clay from parent minerals and forms iron oxides that give soil its color. This transformation provides the mineral foundation that plants need. You should be able to distinguish between weathering and erosion. Weathering is a slow process that contributes to soil development over time, usually many, many years. Erosion is a lot faster, and it's generally a destructive process that removes soil from a site or rapidly degrades the soil. Nutrient cycling involves bacteria converting nitrogen between different forms and microorganisms mineralizing nutrients to make them available to plants. Unfortunately, excessive fertilizer use can disrupt these natural cycles, and intensive cultivation accelerates nutrient loss. This transformation is essential for maintaining soil fertility. Salinization occurs when salt accumulates from irrigation water and evaporation concentrates those salts at the surface. This reduces water uptake by plants, it damages soil structure with sodium, and it can make land unsuitable for further agriculture. This kind of transformation represents soil degradation that people have to work to prevent. Systems flow diagrams show flows into, out of, and within soil ecosystems. These visual tools can help us understand the complexity of soil systems. This diagram shows the flows and transformations of carbon within a soil ecosystem. Notice how complex it is. There's a lot of different transfers and transformations happening simultaneously all the time in soils. However, this diagram is not a systems diagram according to ESS protocols because it doesn't use the standard format of boxes for storages and labeled arrows for flows. This example follows proper ESS protocols for creating systems diagrams. Remember that flows are represented by labeled arrows and storages are shown as boxes. The soil system connects to the atmosphere through gas exchange and evaporation. It connects to organisms through root uptake and decomposition, and it connects to parent rock through weathering. Soils provide the foundation of terrestrial ecosystems because they're a medium for plant growth. They serve as a seed bank, a store for water, and a source of almost all essential plant nutrients. Carbon is the notable exception as the plants obtain it from the atmosphere through photosynthesis. Nutrient-rich soils support higher plant biomass, while diverse soil organisms create complex food webs within soils. The soil texture influences how air and water move throughout the system, and that affects plant growth. Good drainage prevents waterlogging, while organic matter improves water retention. The pH level affects how available nutrients are to plants, and deeper soils allow for more extensive root growth. This diagram shows some of the differences in those factors among major biomes around the world. The physical and chemical components of soils that interact with climatic factors to shape the internal soil ecosystem, and that, in turn, determines the types of plants and animals that are typically found in a given biome. That's why we say that soils are the foundations of terrestrial ecosystems. Soils contribute to biodiversity by providing a habitat and a niche for many species. The incredible diversity of life in soil is often overlooked, but it's absolutely essential for ecosystem functioning. This infographic shows the amazing diversity of organisms in just a single cubic meter of soil. No matter where you are on Earth, the soil under your feet is full of life. Bacteria, fungi, algae, worms, insects, spiders, and other invertebrates, not to mention larger burrowing animals like mice, voles, and rabbits. Bacteria decompose organic matter and are consumed by protozoa, which also eat organic particles. Fungi break down complex compounds and are essential decomposers in soil systems. These microscopic organisms form the foundation of soil food webs. Nematodes feed at several trophic levels, serving various roles from plant parasites to predators. 
Arthropods like this roly-poly bug fragment organic material, making it more accessible for decomposers. Earthworms mix and aerate soils while creating stable aggregates through their castings or worm poop. Fungi break down complex compounds like lignin and cellulose. Plant roots and mycorrhizae form mutualistic associations for nutrient absorption. The plant supplies the fungus with energy via sugars from photosynthesis, and the mycorrhizal fungus breaks down organic matter into constituent nutrients that the plant needs to grow. These symbiotic partnerships are really important for plant nutrition and natural systems. Soils have an important role in recycling of elements as part of biogeochemical cycles. This connection links soil processes to global cycles that sustain life. Bacteria decompose simple organic compounds while fungi break down complex lignin and cellulose. Nitrogen-fixing bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen and nitrifying bacteria convert ammonia to nitrates. Mycorrhizal fungi transfer nutrients to plants while decomposition releases bound nutrients. Mineralization makes nutrients available to plants and continuous recycling maintains the soil fertility. This diagram shows how soil microorganisms connect to plant communities above the ground. The complex web of interactions between soil bacteria, fungi, and plant roots creates a sophisticated system for nutrient exchange and communication that supports entire ecosystems. Soil texture defines the physical makeup of the mineral soil, and it depends on the relative proportion of sand, silt, and clay, as well as humus. This physical property fundamentally affects how the soil functions. Soil texture is determined by the ratio of sand, silt, and clay particles in the soil. Sand particles are the biggest, silt particles are in the middle, and clay particles are the smallest ones. Each particle type has distinct characteristics that influence how the soil system works as a whole. Soils with an optimal mix of all three, called loams, are the ones that facilitate high primary productivity by creating ideal conditions for plant growth, and that's why farmers love loam soils. Soil texture affects primary productivity through the different influences of sand, silt, and clay, and dead organic matter, including humus. This relationship between the physical structure and the biological productivity is really fundamental to understanding soil systems. Sandy soils drain quickly, and that can make them sensitive to drought. Sandy soils also have low nutrient holding ability, although it does allow their roots to penetrate them easily, and they warm up quickly in spring. Clay soils retain water really well, but they may become waterlogged. Clay soils also have a very high cation exchange capacity, or CAC, and that allows them to hold nutrients. Silt provides a moderate or mixed level of nutrient retention, and silt is well-drained, but it still holds moisture long enough to make it available to plants. Loamy soils balance the water retention and the drainage, and that's why the loam soils create optimal conditions for plant growth. Soils can act as carbon sinks, carbon stores, or carbon sources, depending on the relative rates of input of dead organic matter and decomposition. This role in the carbon cycle makes soil management really important for climate change mitigation. When organic matter inputs exceed the decomposition rates, soils act as carbon sinks, removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere so that they gain more carbon than they lose. When inputs are balanced with outputs, soils act as carbon stores in a state of dynamic equilibrium. If decomposition is greater than carbon inputs, soils become carbon sources, releasing carbon into the atmosphere via respiration. Factors like cool temperatures and waterlogging slow down decomposition rates, while cultivation and disturbance often increase the release of carbon. The more vegetation there is within and above a soil, the greater the carbon input. When people disturb soils through farming and other human activities, soils can shift to being a carbon source. That's it for the SL content in Topic 5.1 Soils. You should be able to explain how complex soil systems form the foundation for all terrestrial life, how they support plant growth, store carbon, cycle nutrients, and harbor significant levels of biodiversity. In our next topic, we're going to learn how these features of soils influence the way people grow food. Until then, happy learning.